So 650 metres from home, the car just dies in the middle of the road, and it was my fault. I'd been mucking around with the distributor and dislodged a wire, but I didn't know the car would turn over, but just wouldn't fire. Pulled the distributor car off, played with it, pushed everything around, but just didn't push the one wire that was actually needed to get it. So going. within six seconds, Mr. Auto Elect finds the fucking fault. <laughs> So what was wrong with Brendan? How come it only took you six seconds to fix it? Uh, just so one connector had come loose. And that's not live. Is that live? Could be longer to find me keys. <laughs> so Brendan fixed it on the 14th of March, and on the 18th of March we're pulling it apart again. Uh, all the things that I bought previously, like the boosters and all that, have been sitting around for five and six years. Rubbers are gone hard. Gaskets are drying out and split. And so the the, the master cylinder had, had perished. So we bought another one, it was faulty. Just took that back, got another one. The brass brass fittings where the uh, line screwing were missing. Took that back, got another one, and that one had something else wrong, but I can't remember. So on the fourth go, we ended up getting one that was actually fine. So this is the third one we put in. Uh, I had a original one, which was also a flex drive, and it worked for about a week, and then it stopped working. And this next one we put in had no fluid come through the front ports. And the next one up there had no, what do you call it, no brass seat in it. Now this one's leaking from behind. Oh, this one works fine, but it's leaking from behind. Oh, you stick your finger underneath it, just, it's just fluid running out the back of it. So, I've wiped that a few times, so it's not as much there now. But. So we finally got past the master cylinder issues. And what I was learning is the more I drove it, the more things went wrong with it. All the parts that I've had sitting away in cupboards for years and years and years were all failing. And yeah, it was pretty disheartening to be honest with you. Um, next thing we did, I had to replace a shocky and also I changed it, I put lowering springs in it. I hadn't seated the left hand one again. And so I had to reseat that and replace the shocky. I bounced the shocky, done everything with it. I had one that just wouldn't come out, it wouldn't open up, it just stayed closed all from sitting around in boxes for, for years. So here's the problem, I think we found it. This is the driver's side, you can see the spring seated there on the bottom of the, the lower arm, the control arm, and on the passenger side, it's not seated in the same spot. Unless you just around just a fraction, just enough to make it sit up. So with the change in the uh, suspension, there come tyre issues, which started scraping again, because it was now sitting lower. So I actually got the, uh, got the grinder out and cut down through the stainless steel trim and right through the guard, you can see about halfway down, took a fair chunk of it out and it doesn't touch at all now, it's really good, and you don't even see that it's missing. So I forgot how much fun it is to put a car up on four ramps, and you may be wondering why it is up on four. Uh, we may not care, and I'm gonna, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So I've had a bit of a transmission issue, and it, was, it wouldn't go from second to third unless you took your foot off the accelerator, and then it would change up, and then it, would, it wasn't changing when it was supposed to change, anyway, and all those sorts of things. And it had a minor leak, and then it decided to do a big leak, which is the second time it's now done it. So we took it down to the transmission specialist down the road, who I've known for a long time. And he said, you know, we could muck around and chase leaks and try and fix problems, or we could just rebuild it and be over and done with. So, which is, I agree with. I just I don't want to be underneath the car every five minutes. So, because he's a good, very good at what he does, and he's local, he's he's got a lot of people um, lined up. So I can't get it done for about four weeks. But there's a heap of things I still need to do. I haven't sanded or colour sanded the bonnet yet. I've half sanded it. You can see there, and then the regulator in the window that. Would, Lasted for about three weeks, and then I'll have to, so I'm going to rebuild the regulator in the window, which I started to do, and just hook up the hook up the stereo and a few little other things. So there's a number of things, and then I've got to give it a final cut and buff and polish anyway. So plenty to do. So cleaned up all the oil and got underneath the car, dropped the exhaust and went all at the back, and because I need to get all that out of the road to get the transmission out. Dropped the extractors, that was all more fun. I'm glad I didn't set that air conditioner up straight away. And then uh, as I was getting it out, I got one of the bloody bolts stuck in the flex plate. And I accidentally bent the flex plate, not much, like just a whisker. But it, it was enough to um, to make the starter motor grab. So I had to pull the 
gearbox out again once we put it back in. Luckily I got a good mate lives in the corner, Stu, and he came around and, uh, and gave me a hand to get the gearbox in and out again. And I'm glad he did because I'm not one, uh, young as I once was and uh, it was bloody heavy and bloody awkward. So it took two of us and uh, it was a bit of jigging around but we finally got it all in and bolted it all up. And then I was back onto the exhaust which uh, I had problems with the rattles before and I sorted them all out but now it just started all over again. So as I said, just one thing continued to roll into another. Yeah, it was awesome fun. So while I had it up on all four ramps, two of them which were stews which I had to thank you for. I thought I'd put some chrome tips on the exhaust and give them a coat of black and pretty them up a bit and get them tucked up under the back of the car, nice. So I've done that and then I came up with the idea to put a set of wheelwood brakes on the front which I don't know why I did that because I don't think they work that much better than the original brakes that were on it. But they're on there now so that's the main thing. So you may have noticed the bottom was half sanded uh, even though I'd already sanded and buffed it. Uh, once I put it on the car, I could then see little things in it, and I wasn't happy in it, but there was a lot of clear on that, I put a lot of clear on that bonnet. So I got back in and scuffed it, and, uh, scuffed it all up, and, uh, and then hit it with a 3000 and polished it all up again. That cut really nice this time, and I was quite happy. There's still a few little marks in it, but way better than what it was. So I was back to driving the car, and I had a tapper cover leak, leak, so I lifted the tapper cover off, and I found a tiny little spring sitting on the... Uh, the front bolt. So the search for where it came from began and I found that it was the small spring off the valve stem guide. I'm a bit concerned that it's not on top dead center and the cylinder's down the bottom not at the top because it feels like if I let that go it's going to disappear and I pushed it down a fair way like probably a good 20 mil so I'm thinking it's not on the right stroke. So I've got a wire around it and I've got a rag stuffed against it and I've got a shoelace stuck in the bottom and filled, the, filled as much of the pot up with the shoelace as I could. Uh, thanks to Isaac from Autoboss for suggesting that, but uh, yeah, I'm a bit concerned about it. I have found what the issue is that part of the spring there is broken and uh, the guide's still on there. I've just not taken anything off yet until I get it all sorted. I've got to make sure I work out how to get this bloody cylinder up hold this up and turn it over just by hand take all the plugs out the joys and fun of home mechanics well there you go at least we know what it is and we found the spring and the rest of everything else is there so there's nothing down inside the motor so that's the main thing so here's the problem this piece here has another piece that matches it on the other end that's it there so at least I know there's no more missing and there's the spring off the off the seal which is still in place so problems for tomorrow so I replaced the valve stem seal and then put the anti rattle spring back inside the main spring put it back together and it solved the issue apparently that can be caused from over revving when it's cold and it can cause that issue so I've been told and um, what I had done while I removed the transmission was caused a little problem. You can see the fuel field there is empty and what had happened uh, what had happened is I'd actually pushed the cross member across and, and squashed the aluminium fuel line but underneath the car you couldn't see that. It was really bloody hard to see until I put my um, camping lights underneath and then I was able to see it and find out what the, what the issue was but for months and months and months you could drive it anywhere as soon as it idled it it would stop. But with the fuel issue solved you know after checking the tanks and everything else we'd done uh, it, the car came reliable and it started, we could just about drive it anywhere, we drove it a number of short trips around the Mount Cuthill for Bill's birthday and, uh, and we drove it down to the down to the coast, past everything except for one of these things, loved the fuel. And it was really coming quite reliable and it was time to get the air conditioner into it. As you can see we went down the Gold Coast and to Kingscliff and so forth, there's my sister and the grandkids. And so yeah, it was time to get that air, AC in.